this morning. Come on, give the Lord one more praise. Thank you guys so much. As they're going, let me just remind you, for those of you that, that take this, it's totally free. We want everybody to get one. We want you reading your Bibles, getting in the Word of God, a long time with God. I talked to you about that last week. If you're not getting time with God, you're missing out on one of the most key components of your faith. And so these are free. They're at there's some on the tables and at the doors. And so don't miss these. Uh, hospitality team, help me make sure everybody gets one of these in their hands today. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. That's about four of you. God's good, amen? I want to bring you a message today entitled, Who Am I? I'm having a little bit of trouble breathing, so I've actually swapped to a mic that I won't be coughing in hopefully too much today. But um, we're going to be having a very special time today, a baby dedication. And I didn't realize how much this message fits with what's going to be happening uh, until just a little while ago in a conversation I was having. But uh, this, ask this question of who am I? You know, the Lord took me to Revelation chapter number 2 and verse number 17 for our, our passage today. And, and I thought about as, as I go to this type of a scripture, what it would have been like 20 years ago in a message maybe even eight years ago in a message, I think my goal would have been to, to show you something that, that you've never seen before. And I think that what has happened to me over time is I've realized that my job is not to show you something that you've never seen before, to show you that I've been doing my job studying. It's not. My job is to take this little bit of time that I have been given today to present the Word of God to you and try to address an issue that you're dealing with in your life. You see, in this passage, it's a really neat, uh, uh, really neat passage and probably one of the parts that stands out in me. And I probably would have changed this uh, name of this message uh, to Written in Stone. But, uh, you know, as we're dealing with a question that so many of us struggle with, and that question is, who am I? And here in this passage, it reveals this white stone that has this name written upon it. And, and I probably would have taken you throughout the Bible and tried to show you what all the different stones means and what the difference between a rock and a stone and, and taking in all this journey. And afterwards, you could have went, hmm, that was interesting. But that's not my goal at all today. My goal today is for you to get something out of this message that, that will impart something into your life that will allow the question that I really believe that no matter what stage of life you're in, you're asking, who am I? Now, you may say, well, you, I've got a pretty good grasp of who am I, but I believe that, that we are driven more by that question because we want to see who we are in relation to, to different stages of life. I, I watch young people as they grow up, and they're trying to identify who they are, and we all do some pretty wild things, amen, to try to say who we are. As I look around now, some of you look much more normal than you used to. I remember some of you with spiky things coming out of your head. Some of us now are just glad we got enough hair up there to do something with. Amen. I remember different. I mean, I re, I, I remember uh, uh, making my state with my clothes. We talked about it a little bit the last few weeks. But how many of you remember jams? Anybody remember jams? Some '80s people in here. Come on now. Freaky looking half pants. I had a pair that had two big eyeballs on the knees. So I came walking all you saw these eyeballs. It was pretty cool at Disney World in Space Mountain because the eyeballs were glowing and all you could see rolling around them with this big old set of eyeballs. And people on the other coasters were wondering what was coming out of me. Man, making a statement. Got to look right. Got to act right. Because we're trying to discover who we are and we think we grow out of that. I mean, how many of us have ever reached that place that we're so affected by others that, that we end up buying something that we have no business buying because we're trying to have a status? We're driven. People find their identity in their marriages. People find their identity in their jobs. But what happens when all of that comes crashing down around you and your marriage falls apart and you lose the job? And we find ourselves at different stages of life asking ourselves, who am I? What happens when you found your identity as a parent and your children are grown? What happens when you retire? We ask this question over and over again again who am i and so today i want us to look in revelation chapter 2 verse number 17 let's pray first father open your word to us today that we might become what you want us to be what you've called us to be what you've written in stone that we are help us father to honor you in jesus name and let me get out of the way and you get in the way today and lord just touch this voice 
but it may be clearly heard today. Revelation 2, 17 says, anyone with ears to hear must. See now, this is, it doesn't say should. It says must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. You need this. Listen to what he says. To everyone who is victorious, I will give some of the manna that has been hidden away in heaven. How many look forward to trying manna someday? It means you're going to win. And God's going God's to bless you. And then he says, and I will give to each one, notice this, a white stone. Now, what does that mean he's going to give you? What's the, what's the spiritual symbolism of that? He's going to give you a white stone. What does that mean? Are you ready for this? I'm going to give you the depth of the spiritual symbolism of this. Are you ready? He's going to give you a stone that's white. Hey, Amen. Oh, what is that white stone? I mean, that's, that's the way we like to look. We go through and find the Bible, and we can relate this back to David had five stones, blah, 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 and all this. Yeah! It's a white rock. <laughs> so you're like, book of Revelations. Ooh. But guess what? What's important <laughs> is that on that rock, written in stone, the Bible says, and on the stone will be engraved a new name that no one understands except the one who receives it. That on that stone, a name has been written. It, it amazes me how we have different names. I, I, I got to meet my, my new nephew just a, a few moments ago. I've never met him, which is a crying shame. It shows you what kind of sorry uncle I am, I guess. But... Uh, I've never met him, and he's about, what, four months old? Right in there. See, I don't even, this, I'll repent later. And I got to meet him, and I, I see his mom posting on Facebook about, about this, about him calling him Benjamin, and, 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 I, and I was talking with his dad, and, and, and he says, here, meet Rossi. And I said, well, which one's his name? Is it Benjamin or is it Rossi? And he said something very profound, and I said, this will come out in the sermon. I'm sorry. He said, it depends on who you're talking to. You see, that fits just great because my sermon today is about all the names that we've been given in our lives, and it really depends on who you're talking to. You see, we're given many names that we're known by. Or, I mean, son, daughter, mom, dad, husband, wife, winner, loser. We're known by so many different names, and it really depends on who is the one speaking. Now, I thought it was kind of funny the other evening. We were sitting at our, our dinner table, and as we were sitting there for a Thanksgiving meal, there was all these ladies sitting around. There's about eight ladies here, and Bethany was beside me, and, and, and my father-in-law was, was on the end. And I, so Bethany and we were right here. It was, so it was Don and, and Bethany and I. And all of a sudden, I hear Don uh, chiding, rebuking Bethany a little bit. He said, he said, you call your mom Christina? You call her by her first name? And I heard Bethany respond. She said, well, there's eight moms sitting here, and I've already called her mom three times, and she hadn't responded to that. I thought she might respond to Christina. You see, when they called that name, they, they didn't know <coughs> which one was being spoken to. Or even this week, you know, I kind of I thought it was fun. I got, to, I got to use my new name. It was really cool. Dr. Allen. I was like... Can I write it again? That was fun. A new name. And then I get another name in the, on a bill. I could have declined it because for some reason after my insurance agent of many, many years decided to change my name. It came in to Donald Allen. I said, since my name has never been Donald, I know it means this insurance is not in effect, but, but does that mean I still have to pay it? They think I do. But it's not my name. I thought about, even this week as we get together with our families, how, how the different names that we're given, how they, how they affect us, how, they, how, how they, 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 they touch our lives, and, and how when we're with our family, they don't really see all the things we've accomplished in life. They still see that sniveling little kid. They still see that, that, that bratty little teenager. They, they don't allow us to move forward because they view us in relation to who we are when they met us. And don't allow us 
to move forward. What a profound statement that what you're called is more determined by who you ask. So my question today is who am I really then? Who am I? Am I what I have become or am I still the child they knew? Am I the product of my wins or the result of my failures? And the truth is, are you ready for this? I'm all of these things. I'll never forget the stories that I would hear. My mom was, a, a, for about 25 years, worked in nursing homes. And as a young man, she would maybe take us to wait for our dad to pick us up. And I would go to the nursing homes. And I would sit and listen to these 90-year-old people tell the stories. And they almost always said one of the same things. They would said, I still feel as young, young as you on the inside. I still am that child on the inside. And so I began to realize that we are not all of this or just one of this, but we really are a result of who we were, who we are, and who we hope to be. And we ask this question over and over again, and we've been going through a study on the life of David. What I haven't told you, I've told you it over and over again, hey, I'm studying David, but what I haven't really told you is I've been trying to take you through a study on who you are, on identity, so that you would stop allowing other people to dictate to you who you are, and you begin to realize who God says you are. Let me take you really quickly today, and I'm going to try not to preach too long, but 1 Chronicles chapter 17 and verse number 16 gives us a powerful, powerful message. It says, Then King David went in, and he sat before the Lord, and he prayed. And this is what he says to God. Who am I? Who am I, O Lord, and what is my family that you have brought me this far? And now, O oh God, in addition to everything else, you speak of giving your servant a lasting dynasty. You speak as though I were someone very great, O oh Lord. Listen to what he's saying here. He says, God, who am I that you have blessed me? And he said, God, and now you talk as if I'm someone who deserves to be blessed. Are you sure? Have you ever looked at God like that? Lord, uh, are you sure you love me? Because listen to what he says here a little further. He says, what more can I say to you about the way you have honored me? You know what your servant is really like. Who am I, God, that you've been good to me? Because you really know me. Now, maybe, maybe you're not in the same place I'm in, but I get there a lot of times. Who am I, God, that you have chosen to bless me? Because you know the condition of my heart. You know my struggles, and you know my failures, and you know my weaknesses. And he says, God, who am I that you would choose to bless me? And the fact is, Lord, you know how much I fail. And listen to what he says. But instead, Lord, for your sake, Lord, you have done all of these great things. You've made them known. And I love what he says next. <laughs> he says, Lord, there is nobody like you. Now, that's wonderful. We can shout that there's none like the Lord. But listen to the context that he says it in. He says, who am I, God, that you, you picked me out of nothing and you made me something and you know how bad I am and you know my struggles and you know my weaknesses and, Lord, you did it anyways. I can tell you, Lord, there is nobody like you. I've never even heard of a God like that. Most gods want to give you a step after step after step after step in man-made religions that you never measure up to. And you, oh God, you didn't create a path I can't measure up to. You knew I couldn't measure up. So you laid down a cross and you made a way for me to go across what I could not do. You, living God, there's none like you. You see, David is remembering his life. And this is what he said. He said, look, I was the least member of my family and you made me king. I was shepherd, and you put a crown on my head. He can't believe where he's come to. He can't believe what God has done. And he asked this question that we all ask through our lives, and he gives us a key to realizing who we are supposed to be. Listen to what he says. He says, who am I, Lord? And the question's powerful. But the question is not as powerful as who he's asking. Who am I? Lord, listen to me. He says, who am I, Lord, that you would do these things? Who am I, Lord, that you would bless me like this? Who am I, Lord, that your favor would come on my life? Now, what's the problem in most of our lives is we've not been allowing God to tell us who we are. 
We've been letting others tell us who we are. What if he'd asked his dad? What if he'd went to his dad and said, Dad, who am I? What would his dad have said? You ready for this? His dad would have said, you're the eighth child. You'll never be anything. Really, Pastor? Well, in the culture, the eighth child would not have even inherited anything. He would have been the burden of his oldest brother for the rest of his life. You're just going to be a shepherd. In other words, and probably would have even seen him as the illegitimate child that Scripture seems to project him as. And he would have said, you have no future. Thank God he didn't listen to his dad. What if he went to his brothers? You know, nobody closer than a brother, right? What if he'd went to his brothers? His brothers would have said, you're a worthless errand boy. Now, I'm about to preach here, and I'm trying to behave because we're supposed to be baby dedication Sunday. But what? What if he went to his brothers? You're a worthless errand boy who's a nuisance. What if he'd went and listened to King Saul? In the beginning, King Saul said, you're just a boy. Later in life, he said, you're rebellious, and you're after my throne. And here, David could have killed him twice and honored him. But Saul saw through his own eyes. What? Listen, somebody's about to get a word from the Lord. What if he'd listened to, to Goliath? You know what Goliath told him he was? You ready for this? Bird food. When I get done with you, boy, the birds are going to eat you. Why? Because he was looking at it through what he wanted to do to promote himself. Some of you have allowed other people to tell you who you are long enough. They told you you'd never amount to anything. They told you you were unloved. They told you you were unwanted. They've told you who you are through selfish means because they desire something for themselves. And you must hear this preacher today. Stop listening to the devil. Stop listening to those who are telling you selfishly and start realizing it's not about who you are as much as who he says you're going to be. You see, they saw through selfish means. None of them saw who he really was. They could not see what he had become. And listen, I'm trying to get, get into a message, and I've got a real good one here. But I'm feeling the Holy Ghost now. You have listened to people. And I've heard people tell me over and over again, this is who you are. This is what you've done. And I thank God that in the time that God's allowed me to serve him, I've realized something, that almost every time somebody describes you, they're describing you in selfish means. You need to shake yourself and realize something. And I'm jumping ahead of the gun, gun, but there is a name written in stone. And what that means is your failures will not change it. Their painful attacks on you will not change it. And you need to claim who you are in Christ Jesus and realize stop believing what the world tells you you have to be and start trusting and seeing what God says you are. Amen. The, the problem is young people will sell themselves out short trying to find out who they are. Young women will give themselves to boys. Boys looking for a dad will give themselves to men. People in crisis will sell their integrity, trying to find out who they are, and marriages are dissolving on every side because people say, I don't know who I am. And the reason for that is we're allowing some flunky who can't have a real life, so they act one out on a movie screen to dictate to us what is normal? Let me tell you something. The reason God took a man from a boy in the middle of a, of a wilderness shepherding a flock to becoming one of the greatest figures in history is because he spent time with the Lord. And instead of allowing a father who didn't love him to dictate to him, he allowed a father who had written his name in stone before all time began to dictate what he could become. Oh, Pastor Don, this is not relevant to my life. Let me tell you how relevant it is to your life. Half of the people I know are trying to outlive something from their parents. You will push your family to the edges of saying, I'm not going to be like them. I'm not going to be like this one. I'm not going to be like those people. And you need to stop that. And you need to start saying, if I'm going to be like anybody, it's going to be like Jesus. I'm preaching now. You need to serve God with all your heart 
with all your soul and with all your might. Because if you push for any other reason, you'll push people away trying to attain something that's not possible. You see, you're going to have to realize there's never been anybody like you. And that's not a testament to you. It's a testament to him. That he can make us all so diverse. And you're going to be able to say, like I say, Lord, <laughs> you know me, <laughs> but yet you love me. There's none like you. <laughs> Nobody's so forgiving. Nobody who believes in me so much. Because when I fail, most people write me off. But I failed him a thousand times. I failed him a million times, it feels like. But he sees me for what he's already written in stone. Maybe this isn't making sense to anybody today. But imagine for just a moment what it's going to be like when we hear him call that name. A name that was given to us before our birth. A name that we won't hear until after our death. But imagine what it's going to be like when we suddenly realize what, it's been, what, we, what we've been pushing for our whole lives. Now, I know when we get to heaven, the greatest thing is not going to be gates of pearl. They can get rid of those things if they want to. Somebody, oh, I want to see the golden streets. <laughs> you can have all the golden streets you want. Oh, but what about that sea of glassy emerald? Oh, what about those hills that, that, that roll with the trees that heal the nation? What about the rivers that flow? Oh, I want to see my lost loved ones. Let me tell you something. I'm going to have plenty of time to see that. But the very first thing I want to see is the face of a Savior who loved me when I was unlovable, who cared for me when nobody else cared for me, and who destined me to have a future by his own life. And if we could rank the experiences we're going to have there, which I know we can, I believe coming in a close second it's going to be when there is a father who's going to pull out a stone that somewhere before I ever breathed, he wrote my name down and he determined who I would be. Am I making sense to anybody? And he hands it to me and the Bible tells me nobody else is even going to get it. Makes me wonder if it's a personal joke with the Lord. Hey Amen. Come on now. And he's going to have that twinkle in his eye. And he's going to look at me. And he's going to say, they thought you would never amount to anything. But I saw a great warrior and I called you forth. And I made you somebody. That's what God is going to call you a name. They thought you were a loser. They thought you would never amount to anything. But I rose you up from the ashes. Oh, Pastor Don, you're talking to people who are broken. No, I'm talking to everybody here. Stop allowing the world to dictate who you are and start allowing God. You see, when you hear that name, all the pain, the joy, the fears, the hopes, the confusion, the dreams is all going to make sense. In that moment, your entire life, will, you'll see what you've been pushing for. Why you wonder who you are. Why no man or no woman... Why not even some preacher can give you what you're looking for? It can only be found in the grace of Almighty God. Because I don't do this very often, but I'm going to talk to some of you that are watching right now. You're at a point to where you're so disillusioned with your world that you wonder who could love you, who could care for you, Right now, right where you are, I want you to encounter a God that I'm preaching about today. I want you to throw your hands up to him and say, God, I've lost and I want to be found by you. Because he's never lost you and you're already found by his grace. And that's why you're feeling what you're feeling. Let me hurry today. Let me finish as we prepare to close today. You see, Jesus has a way of looking at people. And, you know, I thought about all these names we're going to hear called out by these parents. They've done a really, really good job trying to name their kids. I mean, nobody wants to name their kids some kind of loser thing. Right? And you say your last name and see how it fits. Sometimes I've heard a lot of names people didn't think through. It's not good. It's not good. Somebody going, that's just mean, Pastor. I'm not going to say any of them because you might know them. But it ain't good. I'm thinking, did you even think about that? But you want to give them a strong name. You want to give them a name. My firstborn, after they told us we didn't know if we could have children, and the miracle that happened and the prophecy and the healing that occurred, 
and she was conceived. We named her after a place to where there was death, but Jesus brought life. When my son came, I named him a name that means the glory of the Lord has descended. I wanted it to be a good name. Plus, if he were to ever follow in the family business, it'd sound pretty cool to be Pastor Zachariah, right? My baby girl. We weren't even expecting. We wanted to celebrate the gift of God. And we wanted to celebrate her mother's last name. And so we, we put the first name and the middle name together. Or that last name is the middle name. And it flowed so beautifully. The gift of God. We wanted to give them a good name. Give them something they could, could use. Something they could hold on to. But that's not the name. That he calls them by. When Simon Peter's family called him Simon, it was probably to honor a relative. But instead, Jesus looked at him and said, You are Peter, a rock. Because he saw what was inside of him. Listen to me. I'm speaking directly to you. And if you feel called out or singled out good because I'm doing it right now don't listen to what they say get along with God don't listen to the lies of the devil get along with God hear what he says you are hear what he calls you to be there were two brothers who were really never going to amount to anything because they were born wealthy and their names were James and John the sons of Zebedee a rich man who had servants in a world that most people were a servant and Jesus looked at them and said you are not some wimps who were born into elegance but you are sons of thunder who will follow all the way to the what does he see when he sees you? Stand with me if you would for just a moment. When God sees you, he doesn't see the big scarlet letter of your failure. When I see you, I may know your failures. When God sees you, he doesn't see the scars of your pain even though I may be able to see them. He sees a name written in stone. And he sees hope and a future. He sees victory. And people may have said you'll never be and you can never do and you can never become. But he sees the one he's loved from before time began. Would you bow your heads with me in this place? Can you hear him whispering? Can you hear him saying, come up higher? Can you hear him say, wake up, this is your time to shine? Can you hear him declaring your name for this generation? God's going to deal with you right there, right where you are right now. They're going to sing through this one time, and then I'm going to pray for you. But he's calling you today. I can hear the footsteps of my king. I can hear his heartbeat beckoning. In my darkness, he has set me free.
Father God, I thank you for what you're doing in this place already. I thank you for the Holy Spirit that's beginning to minister to people here today. God's calling you. Calling you past all the selfish names people have called you. He's calling you to life. He's calling you to hope. He's calling you to joy. Stop allowing other people to dictate who you are and start letting God dictate who you are. You are not a failure. You are a chosen child of God. You are not a loser. You are a royal priesthood. The Bible says anointed by God, but all of your failures scream your name. But today, as we seek the face of God, why don't you allow God to begin to whisper that to you to where he says, I call you hope. I call you joy. I call you a future. I call you into destiny. I call you into somebody greater than who you ever dreamed you would be. And the beauty is, it's written in stone. Come on, guys, sing it. I'm going to pray with this one, then I'll pray with you all. If you've got a need, bring it to Jesus. And I am royalty, I am destiny, and I have been set free. I'm going to shake history, because I am royalty. Destiny and I have been set free. I'm gonna shake history because I am royalty. And I have destiny and I have been set free. I'm gonna shake history because I am royalty. I have destiny and I have been set free. I'm gonna shake history because I am royalty. Set free, I'm gonna shake history cause I am royalty, I have destiny, I have been set free, I'm gonna shake history. Such a time as this He's calling Wake up child It's your turn to shine You were born For such a time as this If you listen to me for just one more moment Bow your heads once more time I believe there are people here today That would say Pastor Don I've been living Trying to outlive a name That my failures caused and I'm ready to live for the name that God has called me to. I've been living, trying to become something I'm not. And I want to become what God wants me to be. And God just popped this into my spirit. Somebody here, it's the words of others, is trying to destroy your mind right now. I feel the spirit of God. And you know God's dealing with you. You are not what you say they are. You are a child of the King. If that's you, with everybody praying and Nobody looking, I don't need your help. Just me and the Holy Ghost right now. He didn't even need my help. But if that's you, I want to see your hand. Just stick it up high if God's dealing with you. Hold it up. Thank you. He's preaching right at you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God's speaking to your hearts right now. Stop trying to be what you have tried to do to not be your your predecessor, not be the, the, create the pain and start becoming who God's called you to be. And maybe you're here today and nobody's going to call you out because it's not our style and nobody's going to embarrass you, but you say, Pastor Don, I know the way I've been living is not in accordance with God's word and I want to live according to God's word right now. I've not been serving Jesus and so the name I've been living under has not been the right name at all. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to ask you to come out. We'll do baptism in a later date. That'll be a time you need to testify. But right now, between you and Jesus, right now, if you've never given your life to Christ or today you'd like to rededicate your life to Christ, nobody's going to embarrass you. But right now, right where you are, would you just put that hand up straight in the air so I know how to pray 
for you today. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. God's changing lives in here today. Is there anyone else? Quickly, quickly today. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's changing lives. You don't have to reach way across, but just take the hand of somebody right there near you if you would now. One or two. Just want you to come into agreement with somebody right now. A new name. The Bible says that when you call upon the Lord and you confess your sins and you believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be saved. And the Bible says that your name will be written in the Lamb's book of life. On the end, when we are judged, the names that are found in that book will be taken to everlasting life. Pastor Don, that's just an old story. No, it's a story I've sold my life out to because I know it's true. Your name must be written there, and this is how it's done, by confessing Jesus Christ is Lord and believing that God raised him from the dead. Let us pray together. Jesus, right now, I believe your word. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I confess I am a sinner. Father, forgive me. Cleanse me. From this moment on, I give you my all. My past, my present, and my future. I believe Christ came for me. He died for me. He arose for me. And in Jesus' name, God is my Father. Heaven is my home. This matter is settled. Father, I thank you for what you've done. And some people are literally coming into a new place of life right now. Lord, you've changed their lives. You've changed their future. You've changed their lives forevermore, Father. And right now, a new name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And we rejoice today. And Father, I thank you that today, those that say, I need the strength of God to believe who I am. I need to take off my sin, take off my failures, lay down my pain. God, you've been speaking directly to them. They are not what those things say they are. They are the children of the living God called a holy nation, a royal peace priesthood. They will rise up and they will shine for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, give him a praise today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a praise. You can do better than that. People gave their life to Christ. You've got a name written in glory. The devil cannot steal your future in Christ. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo, in God good. Give him one more praise before you're seated. Hallelujah. 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 Would you be seated?